Hello! Freedom Guy 55 here again. Well, I never saw Season of the Witch in uh, the movie in the movie theater. I heard of how bad it was and such like that. And so I kind of waited on DVD to see how bad it would be. And apparently this everybody else seemed to actually have the same idea because it was actually sold out the first time I went to the um, video store, Blockbuster. It was like sold out. Everybody seemed to actually want to see this movie. And so I went to the I went to the video store again and I actually found one copy. Can you imagine that? One copy left. Apparently, everybody seems to have the same idea to want to see how bad this movie really is. And boy, is it bad. And, I'm just, and it just gave me a question after seeing the film. It gave me one question. What the hell happened to Nicolas Cage? He's been in three shitty movies in a row. Three. Three crappy movies. Now, granted, one of them is not as crappy as the other two, but still, it's three shitty movies. Three. I mean, the last good movie and good role he wound up doing was actually Kick-Ass. He actually played a decent role within Kick-Ass, and it was actually interesting. I, I did like the way that he acted. But, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I mean, uh, I mean there's, two, there's two things for this question. I mean, I have two ideas. One... One was actually given to me by the guy over in the counter, which sounded interesting, which is that, oh, I don't know, maybe he's just, you know, going through some sort of midlife crisis where he's wanting to be in, like, you know, male films or something. And, you know, that I, that I could actually in some ways buy, you know, you know, try to test his manhood or something. Um, that I could buy, but... Um, I think I don't really think that that's it. I think I know what it is, and it's basically he has a lot of you know he had to pay a lot of money to tax for taxes, or at least he I think maybe he still owes it. I don't know, but he has to pay he had to pay a lot of money to taxes. So basically, I think he's trying to get his money back by making these particular types of films. So he, I mean he's when I look at IMDb, he's actually got a lot of um, films ahead of him. I mean, they're in pre-production, post-production, all this kind of stuff. So there's a lot of films he's doing in the future. So I think that basically, I mean, even including the sequel to Ghost Rider. So at the same time, I'm thinking that he just wants to get into, get into these films and, you know, get a top billing kind of, you know, in these particular films so that he can actually, you know, pay back his taxes. So, I, I'm thinking that that's probably what it is. But, um, I'm gonna go through his three shitty movies. The uh, shitty movies. The ones after Kick-Ass. Um, basically, uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice, um, Drive Angry, and Season of the Witch. The one I just saw. So, here we go. The first one is Sorcerer's Apprentice. Now, Nicolas Cage gets the particular type of top billing of this movie, but basically he's really not a, ba a good focal point of the film. And basically, he actually doesn't really act very well in, in the movie. He kind of seems to be kind of a making himself kind of the side character, and he's not really, he doesn't really seem to be very convincing as a teacher. Um, he just seems to be there, and it kind of seems to level out. It's not, it's not a bad, it's not a bad acting job, but it's not really the greatest. It's not really a great acting job. He just doesn't put his heart into it, and you can tell that he hasn't. Um, but the only good things about this particular movie um, are, are the uh, lo the love story between, or the kind of semi love story, even though that I should, I think that they should have put more into that, but. The semi love story between um, J. Uh, 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 was it Brecta, uh, Breckel or something like that? Or I'm not sure exactly his name. It's the guy from uh, She's Out of Your League, and um, and he's the voice, uh, uh, the voice of the main character in um, How to Train Your Dragon. So in, in some ways, he he plays a good role with. Uh, with uh, Teresa Palmer, who is the only good actor in the movie, um, in the movie I Am Number Four. I think that the whole movie of I Am Number Four, the only good actor in the movie happens to be Teresa Palmer, who actually doesn't isn't even in the movie that much. So, 
as the same at the same token i think that this love story between the two is actually really well done in between the characters so they did a good job in that i just wish they thought uh, they would have actually had much more in it and the acting and the acting job uh, between it in alfred molina alfred molina uh, playing the villain he actually does put heart into the movie and you can actually tell Alfred Molina does put his heart into this kind of role. When you kind of compare it to Nicolas Cage's character and Alfred Molina's character, you can understand that Alfred Molina plays a better, uh, plays a better, you know, plays, you know, a better acting job than Nicolas Cage in this. You could just tell. Because I think that Alfred Molina just puts more of his heart and soul into it. The rest of the movie is just really very much a mess. Uh, just due to the fact that and not a, it, it kind of seems to go from scene to scene to scene to scene to scene very quickly. And we don't really know enough about the particular kind of story behind the uh, magic. We're just kind of given a brief overview. And then we're just kind of thrusted into this. And I didn't like the concept where um, this kid... Where this kid who basically gets discovered to be the next sorcerer winds up, uh, you know, running out and basically, you know, for like, I don't know... 10 or some odd years then comes out again and then they have to find the kid again. I thought that that was a little bit done badly. I thought that they could have actually done in some ways a different particular kind of thing where why does this kid actually not um, become a sorcerer early in his life? Um, maybe they don't even have to describe it or explain it. They can just go on with the story. But they, I thought that it was bad in how they set that up. It just didn't, it just didn't seem convincing. And then, of course, the, the magic within the movie. The magic is so open in this movie. It's like they really play upon individual stupidity so much that basically, you know, a car changes right in front of everybody on the street. Just like, you know, like ripples in the thing. And, uh, uh, you know, a bird, a really huge metal metallic bird flies through and lands. And you're like wondering, doesn't anybody see these things? I mean, seriously, you make these things so out in the open and not like, you know, I mean, at least in Men in Black, they actually had that, you know, memory stick where they can actually erase people's memories. That actually made sense. This one, they're actually just playing more upon people's stupidity. That's sad. That's just, to me, sad. I mean, it's, there has to be someone around there going, what the hell is that? But they just don't. It's just, to my perspective, I found it... I found that, I thought, I found that you know, magic stuff just too ridiculous in that sense. Um, that was my, that's my big problems with the film. And I thought that also the sequence where they had the mops and stuff, that they were mimicking um, uh, the, the Fantasia movie... I felt that I felt that was forced upon me. Like, okay, I understand this. This is the Fantasia, and Fantasia did it better. But you know, the one thing is, I do have to give props to Alfred Molina, the the roman the romance in the movie, and uh, which was convincing, and the um, and the special effects in the movie were really well done. It's just everything else didn't work, especially Nicolas Cage's acting. It just seemed like he was just there to just do a job. Well. So I give it two stars. It is still thumbs down, but it's just two stars because based upon that. Okay, next film is Drive Angry. Now, I really wanted to like this film. I really did. I really wanted to because it kind of reminded me of a Grindhouse feature. At least the trailer did. And um, so I thought, eh, I was going to like this film and such. And then, of course, no, I really don't like this film. Actually, in this film, Nicolas Cage actually acts worse than he did in Sorcerer's Apprentice. I mean, this is a bad acting. I mean, if you want to see Nicolas Cage do bad acting, this is bad acting. He basically has this, uh, do bad acting. And I just found, oh man, it's just terrible acting. I found his character such, so boring uh, I didn't really find any interest in his character. And also the villain in the movie, Billy Burke, really very monotone. I didn't even, I wasn't even convinced by his, by his display as being a, you know, a kind of merciless villain. I, it just, he didn't seem that menacing. He was just so monotone. 
I mean, the the saddest part about it is, is that the the actual characters that were actually much more interesting in the movie was William Finchner, who played the uh, accountant. He actually played his role really well, and the Amber Heard, who who plays a typical um, trailer park woman, but she does play it very well. Even though that it's a cliche, typical trailer park woman, she does play her role very well, though. And I thought that it's pretty sad that your that the supporting cast plays their roles better than the hero and the villain, the people that you're supposed to be concentrating on. That is just absolutely bad. And then there are sequences in the movie, such as like the uh, slow motion action sequences that are supposed to either look, you know, either I don't know what they were going for, either looking funny or cool, and they just really don't. They don't achieve either one. I mean, when he's in the bedroom with the with the naked woman on him, and he's like just going in a slow motion, killing all the people in the in the room, it was just too silly. And it wasn't silly like funny, like I think that that's what they were going for. No, it was silly, stupid. I mean, I just wasn't really, you know, I didn't even like the scene at all. And you know, the woman's naked; he's not. <laughs> Ooh, really? You know, I mean, that's that that's kind of funny for you. But anyway, but that's cool. I mean, I don't want to see Nick Cage's ass or anything. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> but it, it's kind of funny in how they played that. It, the action sequences are an bore. Um, the special effects are kind of here and gone. They may look cool, but yet they just didn't seem to actually achieve that wow kind of movie in a movie. I, I found this movie so, so bad. I mean, it just never worked or achieved any kind of good level at all. So I have to give this movie kind of one star. I mean, it is really bad. It is a bad movie. I do not suggest to anybody to see this movie. Drive Angry, one star, thumbs down, period. Okay, now let's get the season of The Witch. Shall we? Do you want the short version of this one? Oh yes, I would love to give you the short version. The short version of this movie is this. It's like a, a bigger budget U Bowl film. Yeah, it's that bad. I mean, ter it is absolute it is worse than it is worse than Drive Angry. Seriously, it is. Um I can understand why people think that this movie is bad. It is really bad. I mean, for the first half of the film, we're thrusted into action sequences because it takes place in um, in the Dark Ages, okay? The Crusades or something like that. And basically, they're fighting for God. And, and all of a sudden, we're thrusted into these action sequences that are absolutely the most horrid action sequences that I've ever seen in my life. They are so utterly repetitive. It goes on, you know, it's like they are so repetitive that it's like, is this the same scene? You're like wondering that because all of a sudden they go into a scene where, you know, it's it's bright, it's sunny and they're fighting. And then and then it, like one scene, it's in the forest and then all that kind of stuff. And, and then they're and then they add snow. And then you're like wondering, is this the same scene? They're just adding environment uh, differences. I mean, that's the only difference that they seem to have, is that they're adding just different environments. I, it was so bad. That, it, the first half is so unbelievably horrid. The second half is a little better, but not that much. The movie plays so much like, like this huge, unbelievable... Um, you know, regular, everyday horror film where they're transporting a witch... Um, from one place to another so that they can exercise her somewhere and they're re uh, and of course they've left they've left the church they're deserters and then they get arrested and then they're kind of forced into basically um, trying to transport this witch to tr exercise her and the one thing is is that the only acting that seems to be at least decent is the woman in the actual you know in the who's locked up in this kind of you know chair that plays the supposed witch right the only one that actually has any decent acting in this movie. Nicolas Cage is absolutely terrible. He goes in and out of, of you know, uh, 
dialogue that seems to remind you of the uh, of the of the times and then he goes back to like the 20th century di you know dialogue i mean his like accent seems to go in and out um also also ron perlman who's also a good actor as well seems to you know <laughs> seems to act uh like he's out of century like this isn't his century. I mean, the dialogue that he's giving isn't isn't in his century. He seems to act like he has the dialogue of people who actually live today, and they thrusted him into you know the you know this kind of Middle Ages, Dark Ages area. It's just terrible. It is bad. It's like these actors never really gave a shit about their craft or acting. They just like said, okay, we're here and okay, throw out the swords and shit like that. I mean, it's like so bad acting by people who actually are good actors. I'm amazed of how bad that is. Oh my God, it's terrible. And then the other, and then the other half of the film plays so much like a typical, you know, supernatural horror film that doesn't even play well. It's not scary it's not thrilling i mean i don't even find any particular type of value in this movie it's pg-13 so there's no real gore so the one thing is is that it you know and if it's pg-13 you want to actually concentrate more on the thrills don't you you want to concentrate on basically people being jumped out of their seat because that's how it works you know that's what they did with the sixth sense that's why you don't see a lot of violence in the movie and you're just like jumping you're just like jumping in the you know thing and that's why it kind of works this movie tries to play like a rated R horror film but it's PG but it's PG13 which doesn't give you the thrills of that horror film of any kind of gore so even it even fails at that so being as stupid as that is of making it into a kind of halfway horror film it's still stupid because it's PG-13 and it doesn't give you the gore that you would want if you like horror films, which I do. But, you know, that's a personal preference and horror films are shit anyway. But as, as films, they're shit. But as, you know, gore and such like that, they seem to have some sort of, you know, like guilty pleasure. But uh, as far as anything else, this fails at that. That's the amazing part. It is so utterly bad. Bad, 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 bad. Um, it is so bad, it is, worse th it is worse than Zookeeper. That's how bad it is. Yeah. I give it one half star. One half star. Why? Because the actual... I actually did like some of the... Um, special effects in this film and also this uh, and also the set design um, I thought it was actually I thought those were good but the rest of the film really is absolutely horrid do not see this picture thumbs down but of course you're probably going to see it because you're wanting to know how bad it is but I just told you <laughs> It's a half star. It is just terrible. And I'm sure as hell hoping. I mean, Nicolas Cage's next next acting job is um, is Trespass. And hopefully he'll actually put at least enough effort of his acting into the movie in order for me to have a tendency to like it at least somewhat. If Even if it is a bad movie, I can just say, hey, Nicolas Cage did a good job. And I want... To say that I really want to say that in the future because I am getting so utterly tired of these uh, of Nicolas Cage getting into getting into shitty movies back to back to back so basically sources apprentice um, thumbs down two stars um, uh, drive angry one star thumbs down and season of the witch half a star thumbs down Totally, back to back to back, bad films. Hopefully, his next film, Trespass, will be better. Well, and I don't really mean to bash uh, Nicolas Cage because he's in good movies. I mean, when Leaving Las Vegas and, and Face Off were really good acting jobs for him. It's just, these three are just terrible. And I feel sad, because he is a good actor. But anyway... That's it. And uh, I thank you for your time, man. Have a nice day.